you with the kid and the uh, directing that you are doing in addition to your acting, had, do you find yourself doing anything from Stanley Kubrick or any, uh, any of you know, those moments? A, I've, I've been through? asked that, and it's a, I, it's, it's a really interesting question because you, know, you don't think about it until you start directing, and then you realize, oh, I, I know this because of him. Mm -hmm. you know, I know this because of her like all the great people that you've worked with in your career. So sure, you know, we were, there's some shots of Dane DeHaan in this movie that are very Kubrick-esque and um, for sure. And you don't really know, you're not conscious of it until you actually do it and you go, oh my God, like I really know a lot from these people. You know, these people have taught me a lot over the years. And you've directed your daughter. Correct. I did. Layla George, yeah. Now, she's amazing in the movie. I couldn't imagine. Uh, again, my daughter's five right now. She's right. not a good listener uh, <laughs> on occasion. Uh, what's that like? Join the daughter club, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> what is it like directing your daughter? What's yeah, that like? Fantastic. She's fantastic. She's amazing. She's doing really good. Her, She's got her own career going and stuff. Her name is Layla George. She doesn't use uh, our names. She mm -hmm. just wants to do it on her own. She's fantastic. And you know, she she showed up on set every day, well prepared. She has a very emotional part to play. This little extreme emotion that her character goes through, and she just pulled it off. Yeah, I was very proud of her. That's great, and congratulations on that. Uh, and it, it's a, a western about a, a kid who's forced to go uh, on the run, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, Chris Pratt plays a different character for him he does. In, in this he plays film. A baddie, yeah. a real bad guy. Yeah, and. Um, and Ethan Hawke, you've been in tons of films with him, right? A yeah, handful well, of buds, movies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, what do you like about the Western? Because nobody seems to be making Westerns as much anymore. Well, it's a, it's a tough movie to get made, a Western, you know, because not everybody likes a Western. You would think that everybody would. And people that like Westerns think that everybody likes Westerns. But it's not true. And uh, so it's tough for people to put money behind a Western. So you have to get the right players to come in and do it and, and, and hopefully the right script, you know. So... You know, it's a it's a bit of a task, but this particular thing is a is 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 something. It's a coming of age story, really, um, where I've taken a, a a fictional character and I've put him in the middle of two factual characters, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. So this boy goes on the run, he meets Billy the Kid, and then eventually Pat Garrett, and he stays with him, and he's actually there when Garrett kills Billy, and then the story has a has a has a moral at the at the end that. But I can't say, but sure. The it's an intense story about a young man's point of view of men that have taught him in his life. You know, I think back about my life in the in the the bad examples that I've had from men and the good examples that I've had from men. Like my stepfather was this incredible man. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. I would be just some blank head on the street. Right. You know? And, 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 but there's other men who I thought were really super cool, but in fact, as a child, I never considered the path of destruction that they're leaving behind them. And could nurse definitely not considering it. So the idea of that, that a young boy would have these two different types of men in front of him and, and grow from that is the, is the key to the story. What is your favorite Western, if you can pinpoint one? The Searchers, I think. You, we'll didn't, stutter, you didn't stutter right there, The Searchers. Yeah. It's a great movie. It is a great movie. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. I love, uh, I know it's more recent, I love Unforgiven. Yeah, it's really good. I think Unforgiven is just- It is, it is. Know, obviously Hackman and, and Hackman's Morgan amazing, Freeman. Man. Those last scenes with him and Hackman. Are and amazing. yeah, with Clint Eastwood and Hackman. Yeah. I do love Unforgiven. Do you have a favorite sports movie? Vincent um, D'Onofrio? Hmm. I can give you mine for you to kickstart the conversation. Go ahead. Hoosiers? Another Gene Ooh, Hackman film. That's a good film. movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. The, where I, I, I there's so many times in what I do for a living, and also with my kids. Yeah. Where I will take something from that film, where you measure the rim to the floor and the baseline to the foul line. Yeah. Same as this small gym. It just doesn't matter that you're in the Butler Fieldhouse in yeah. Indianapolis. You know. Right. Exactly. So yeah. and it's that's so many different ways you can. Does 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 Brian's song still hold up? That's of course. Absolutely. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. That was like a had a huge effect on me. Did it really? Yeah, it was the first film that made me cry, like in my life. Like that was the like I'd never cried. I thought it was silly. Like how? Why would you cry? For Brian's me? song. Brian's song made the, me cry. For the first yeah. time. For the first time watching a film. Watching a film. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, of course, that still stands. James Caan, and obviously. Well, yeah, brilliant. You know. Yeah. Uh, playing Brian Piccolo. 
<laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, Gail Sayers, who's uh, every, every now and then I see yeah. him with the uh, It's probably, probably at the Hall be of a Fame. good idea to watch that movie, right? Say it again? Just to see if it holds up for me. Oh, know, sure. To watch it again. Well, I mean, I've seen Billy D. Williams stroll around here. I think he could still play. Yeah. He could still play a little bit, for <laughs> sure. So, Brian's song, that's, that's a good one. Uh, you know, obviously, The Natural, yeah. I also love that as well. Yeah, the That's not a yeah. bad film. Yeah. But... Uh, I look forward to uh, the kid blowing up for you, sir. Uh, and I'm a big fan, as Raging I mentioned. Bull. Raging Bull. You know what? I mean, it's not really a sports movie. It but. is. A, here's one for you. That I don't think this is a sports movie. And in my world, this is what's called a hot take. Okay. I don't think Rocky's a sports movie. Right. And we we have asked of Carl Weathers what he thinks. It's a love story. Yeah. Between Adrian and Rocky. Right? Yeah. It's a love story. Or maybe between a guy and boxing. How even though it's it's the environment is a sport, it transcends sport and turns I, into something else. I don't think Rocky's a sports movie, which yeah. is now always people say top five sports movie. People think I'm a little crazy. But Raging Bull to me It's another one of those. It's a it's a you know it's a comment on on, on this man's life. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In a big way. Yeah. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.